So, welcome to the stage, Tom Rogers. Well, uh, hello guys. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction. <laughs> That was great. Uh, so my name is Tom Rogers, and I'm here today to talk about the four changes to help you scale a business you love. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, awesome. So the first thing I want to do to gauge the room is I want to get you standing up based on the different type of business that you're in, okay? So I'm gonna talk through different types of business, and I want you to stand. But it's important that when you stand, you look around and see who else is doing that type of business, because I'm gonna come back to that later on. So everyone that's doing an Amazon-related business, could you please stand? And again, take a look around who else is doing it, because this is important. Awesome, now, thank you very much. If you can just take a seat. So there's uh, quite a few people. And then e-commerce and dropshipping. There you go, it's a big chunk of you. It's Johnny's crowd. <laughs> uh, that's great, guys, if you could just take a seat. How about freelancing? How many freelancers do we have in the house? Ah, a lot as well, awesome. Again, take a look around, because this is important. Who else is doing your type of business? Awesome, if you guys could take a seat, thank you very much. And developers, SaaS companies, that sort of thing. Do we have any developers in the house? Yeah, there's quite a few. Again, see, see your techie nerd friends, who else is here? <laughs> Great, if you could just take a seat, guys, thank you very much. And then designers, do we have any designers in the house? Awesome, thank you very much, you guys can take a seat. And who else ended up being one of the others, which is what I am? Did you get an other, other sticker? There you go, there's so many of us, yes. <laughs> awesome, so you're the other. Again, take a look around, see who else is another. All right, great, thanks so much for that, guys. So the reason I wanted to do that was because I'm gonna go through four changes to help me scale my business, but I believe that these changes can help all of you as well. Now, some of these changes you might have heard, but at the end of the change, I'm gonna give you tips, and I'm hoping that you pick up one or two nuggets out of these tips, and then you can go away and apply them to your business. So I hope that sounds good. So my story. So my story actually starts inside a tiny freezing cold plane that was about 13,000 feet up in the air. And you might be thinking, what the heck does he mean by that? Well, basically, a few years ago, I found myself cramped up inside this tiny plane like this. I was stuck next to the side of it and it was shaking violently. I mean, it was going nuts because it was one of those small planes that was powered by two small propeller engines which meant that the noise was deafening. So I don't know if you've been cramped inside a tiny plane, 13,000 feet up in the air, they're shaking violently, but let me tell you, I was scared shitless, okay? And then out of nowhere, as if things couldn't get any worse, the door next to me slid open, and then things got really panicked. The pilot turns around, looks at me, and starts shouting. The only problem, I couldn't hear him because the sound was so loud. So I'm thinking, what the hell, what the hell is he saying? Then suddenly the plane shakes and I fall out. And then everything goes nuts. I'm now up, down, I'm seeing the sky, the horizon, my stomach is in my pits, I don't know what's going on. You know the sound of just wind going It was going like that, right past my head. It felt like ages I was falling and I didn't know what I was feeling. Then all of a sudden, quite dramatically, I slowed down. Finally, my heart rate started to get better. <laughs> uh, the wind noise calmed down, and I started gliding left to right, left to right. And then in front of me, I saw it, the snow-capped mountains of Switzerland. Now, if you haven't guessed yet, I was skydiving. And there's a lot of relieved faces in the crowd because some of you were like, oh my God. <laughs> but basically, I'm sharing this moment with you because for me, this was my Aha moment, okay? <laughs> this was the moment for me when I realized I wanted to build a business around adventure travel. I wanted to start a travel blog. I wanted to make this business big and I wanted to do this forever. Now, the reason I start with this story was because I feel that all of us know what we're passionate about or at least have some ideas what we love. We've had aha moments, but we're not quite sure how to scale this into a six, seven or eight figure business. The business that I started here, when I was skydiving, I was actually being paid to skydive through my travel blog. And then, but it wasn't that much. And that's when I was like, right, I need to grow this. This business later on would go to make six figures in profit in one year. 
It did over a quarter of a million in profit last year, and we're on track to do over half a million dollars in profit this year with a team of less than five people. I take salaries out of that, and that's profit on top. So this is what I want to talk about, is I want to go through my exact journey and label those, those changes and hopefully help you scale your business. Before I get into those changes, this is me. My name is Tom Rogers. In case you can't tell by my annoying accent, I'm from Wales. <laughs> Thank you, some Welsh people in the house. I'm from Wales, UK, and where I'm from, it's kind of, like most places, I guess, the path is sort of set up for you. You know, you get good grades in school to get into university, and then you get good grades in university to get a job, and the path was laid out. And that's okay, but for me, I just always wanted more. I wanted more adventure. I wanted to travel the world. So from an age of 16, I joined the Air Cadets. And yes, this cute little kid is me. <laughs> So fun fact, at the age of 16, I actually could fly gliders and planes, but I couldn't drive a car yet, thanks to the UK law. <laughs> True story. Uh, so I then went from the Air Cadets, and I went to study, and I did a, deg a degree in aerospace engineering. But while studying, I made it a priority to save up, because I knew after I finished, I was going to go traveling the world. After four years of traveling the world, my time came. That's the classic uh, mum takes a photo of their son when they're leaving the house. <laughs> so as you can see, I had my one-way ticket to Southeast Asia. Um, I don't want to talk about the hat. I'm not sure what I was trying to prove. <laughs> but I was super, super excited. I had a one-way ticket. I had no idea what to expect. And then I set off. I traveled across China. I rode a motorbike across Vietnam. I chilled on the Thai Islands. I did all the typical stuff that most people do on their gap year, okay? My original plan was to go to Australia. I was gonna go to Australia, work, replenish my funds, and then continue on to South America. But things didn't go to plan. Obviously, I met a girl. <laughs> a girl is called Anna. She's actually sitting down there at the moment. She's my girlfriend to date and my co-founder and business partner in this business. So, <laughs> so I met Anna and then that meant, well, she was from the Philippines. So of course, I followed the girl to the Philippines. We started dating, we hit it off, I got a job, and then about six months into getting this part-time job, I, I replenished some funds. Of course, I was still super eager to continue traveling. I had only just begun, and I had this whole thing planned. So I turned to her, we'd been dating for about six months, and I said, hey, let's go travel in the world. Again, because we met while traveling. But she was like, I just finished my trip, I got back, and now I've done a master's degree in teaching. I've got no money left. I was like, yeah, so let's go. <laughs> so, of course, she was up for it. She really wanted to travel again. But we had no idea how to make money. And at the time, this is a true story, she had less than about two grand to her name. And she had just done a master's degree. So we began like everyone else. I kind of wish I had a four-hour work week joke here because that's been getting good laughs. <laughs> I kind of wish I had that. But anyway, that wasn't for us. We were Googling, though. And I do remember Anna coming in one day and she was like, Tom, Tom, I found it. I found what we're going to do online. I was like, what? What is it? She was like, there's a travel blogger making 5,000 US dollars a month. I was like, just stared back blankly at her. She said, yeah, 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 this is it. All we have to do is start a blog, start writing about our travels, and we'll be making money. So I looked back at her and I said, what's a blog? I had no idea what a blog was. I was just traveling, being free. I, I, I'm not the type of guy to read, <laughs> like to, to read travel blogs. It's not my thing, that's why I like Audible. <laughs> so I replied with what's a blog, but I was super keen to travel again. So if she was gonna do it, if we were starting a travel blog, I was like, let's do it. So we jumped in. We set up the travel blog. I remember getting it online. It looked absolutely terrible. My first design looked terrible, but I felt like this guy. I did, man. I had a website. It was online. I could send my mum to it. I was so excited. I, I honestly thought, I'm going to make it rain. <laughs> so as you can imagine, we set up this travel blog, we started traveling the world, and we were making shitloads of money. Well, not exactly. It did not go like that. The first 18 months was rough. Before I get into that, though, now, the reason I'm on this stage today and the reason I'm talking to you guys is because the travel blog that we did build, uh, did build went, into, went to becoming one of the top 20 travel blogs in the world. It now gets over half a million readers a month, 
generates well over a quarter million in profit passively. We don't need to work on it. We travel pretty much continuously. It's taken me across 40 continents, 40 countries. I'm checking if anyone's listening. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's taken me across 40 countries. And yeah, it's been, it's been a dream to make, happen, make it happen. After three and a half years of working on Adventure New and getting it to over a quarter million, we then set up a travel university to help other travel bloggers do the same. It's been a journey, but it didn't always start like that. So let me take you back to the first 18 months. Now, when we first started our travel blog, I didn't know about this nomad movement. I tried to do everything myself, and you know, instead of learning for people that had already done it, I tried to just, I didn't really have proper business models in place, I just thought money would come to us. Instead of focusing on certain projects every, every year, which I'm gonna talk about later, we would work on random things and just do different stuff. So as you can imagine, our business was up, down, all over the place, it wasn't really growing. We did all the, the wrong stuff in the first 18 months. After that time, and it was two months to living in Chiang Mai actually, when we got here, and we started surrounding ourselves with others, the things finally started to go better. So this is um, our profit graph from uh, July 2015 to August last year. Uh, as you can see, this is when things started to get better from us and before that was the rough time that I was just talking about. Um, the reason I wanted to show you this graph is, it's funny, you were actually asking me about my, pro my profit margins earlier. Our profit margin is like 90% because it's blogging, it's organic. So we've grown it to a passive income and now it's organic. But we are trying to scale it later on so that will change. But the point of showing this is that this red bit is when things started to get better for us. And I'm gonna keep referring to this as I go through each change. So what changed here? Why did we go from a couple of grand a month to a steady six grand at the, at, at the start? As you can see in August, we did 30 grand and then we're hoping to do about half, uh, half a million this year. So what changed then? Well, starting running, a business is like climbing a bloody mountain. It's hard, it takes time, and when you're halfway up, you're thinking, why the hell did I start this in the first place? <laughs> no, I'm serious. The problem for me, though, is that I started my travel blog just because I wanted to make some money, but I didn't know what mountain I wanted to climb. I didn't have a clear vision for my business. And that, that was the first thing. Now last year, I achieved one, one of my goals that I wanted to do before I turned 30. And that was I reached Everest Base Camp. Uh, I did it last year in March, and as you can imagine, climbing Everest Base Camp wasn't easy. It was, min you know, we had to go through minus 25 degree temperatures, we had to hike every day for 14 days, 12 hours every day. And when you get to the higher heights, there's a lack of oxygen. It's very hard to breathe, and most people get airlifted back down. But my point is, I never would have reached Everest Base Camp without first identifying that is the mountain that I want to climb. So this was the first thing in my business that we had to do. It was to know your mountain, have a vision for your business, okay? When I started, like I said, I was just trying to make money online. So what happens is you'll start working on one thing and then you'll, you'll come to a nomad summit and then you'll be like, oh, now I need to do Skillshare, now I need to do drop shipping, now I need to do this. And then you'll end up doing loads of different things. If it ties in with your vision, great. But if it doesn't, okay, so that was the problem in the first 18 months for us, and this is why we were all over the place. I remember we were actually in Bali, and we were about a year into our travel blog, and we were getting 50,000 readers a month. Uh, of course, I started talking to people, and they were all doing drop shipping, so I was like, well, we need to do drop shipping. We need to sell some shit. We need to make some money. <laughs> because right now we're not making any money. So we set up a store. But because of my lack of vision, we ended up creating a new brand, a new domain, a new Shopify store. We actually created 14 products. We sent samples out. But then as soon as we realized there would be some sort of customer service involved, we scrapped the project. It wasn't actually what we wanted. We, wanted to, we were moving around a lot. We wanted to keep traveling. My point here is that we wasted two to three weeks creating this project, a bit of money, and then sunk it. It's because we ha didn't have a vision. So at this point, we started asking ourselves these questions. And I want you guys to ask yourself these questions right now if you don't have a clear vision for your company. If you, if you don't know it off by heart, you don't have a clear vision. Ask yourself these things. What excites me? What am I trying to achieve my business? Where do I want to go with this? Who do I want to help? When you guys are writing that down, I'm gonna grab some water. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so I asked myself these questions around about 18 months into it. And for me, there was two things I identified that got me super excited, that got me talking 100 miles an hour like I am right now. Number one, it was adventure holidays. I loved adventure holidays. I loved trekking to Everest Base Camp. I loved driving a tuk-tuk across Sri Lanka, which, we've, which we did last year. I liked sailing across the Philippines. If you've got two weeks off in the year, I wanted to help you go on an adventure holiday rather than going on an all-inclusive type thing and just sit by the pool and chill out. So in my vision, my company had to do that. It had to inspire people to go on more adventure holidays. The second thing I loved is that when I talked to people about travel blogging or making money while traveling, and I wanted to help them. They would be like, oh, I want to travel more, but I don't know how to make it happen. And I would get so excited. I've actually met a couple of people here. Um, I work with a couple of people and, and you see when I get excited, when I talk to you about your businesses, I can just see the funnels and stuff. So I got super excited. So that was the second thing. My business needed to promote adventure holidays and it needed to help other people profit from their passions. So hence we came up with a vision for my company to make Adventure You the number one travel blog in the world. I want to help people create unforgettable memories by helping them discover, compare, and experience the best adventure holidays in the world. And then for those that want to keep traveling, we want to offer the best online courses to help them become travel creators. This really helped us form our vision. So if you don't have a clear vision for your company right now, I want to walk you through some tips. Tip number one, list down three flow state situations. Who here knows what flow state means? Raise your hand. Okay, so there is, there's over half the room that doesn't know what that means. That's good, because last year I didn't know what it meant either. Flow state is when essentially you're in the zone. It's called being in the zone. You can identify it because you will feel more energetic after you finish the activity than when you started. Okay, and this is important because you want to be energized towards working towards your vision. If you're in any of these categories that I spoke about earlier, usually you're a one-man team when you start. So your vision has to be in line with that flow state, so you're energized. If you don't know what yours is, you can use what we call the flow state secret source and create a list of things you're good at, find the commonalities, list down your passions, and then you can find your flow states by basically combining two and three. Again, it's usually just those times that you feel more energized after, okay? So that's number one. Number two is to list three challenges you have overcome in your life things that you would like to help other people overcome uh, through avoidance or whatever it may be. My business mentor, Jim Hughes, is the one who brought this to my attention and this helped me craft our vision. Number three, pick a market you want to dominate. Be excited about this. Pick the market that you want to reach the top of. And then this is a bonus point. And I've put it as a bonus because I don't want to overwhelm you and think you have to have this to, to, to write your vision. But if you can, it will help and it will make you even more driven. Understand the top met metrics you would need to dominate. Traffic, users, revenue. If you have a store, understand how big that market is. How high can you scale this business? The reason this is important is because then you know your ceiling. Then you know when you should sell your business. Maybe if you start a dropshipping store and it's valued at 30 grand currently, if you know these metrics, you might know that actually there's space for me to grow this to you know, 60 grand value or 100 grand value. But if you can know these, it'll really help. So do those things and you'll be able to write your vision and put it down. And trust me, once you have this, it will get you moving in the right direction and a lot faster, you'll feel motivated. But it's important to note that you are gonna have to revisit this vision and, you will, and it won't just happen overnight, okay? So going back to 2018, I had, I had chosen that I wanted to climb Everest Base Camp, but as a wise Jedi once said, Long way to go, you still have. Now, I'm not gonna do a Yoda impression. <laughs> I can see some of you going, thank God for that, jeez. <laughs> no, but honestly, it's better to have a mentor. I knew if you heard this from every speaker, I think Johnny should make this whole conference about that, that should be the theme. Uh, at the end of this point, I'm gonna give you tips on how to level up your mentoring game. That's change number two for me, was to get a mentor, invest in yourself. Who here is here this saying? You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Exactly. Quite a lot of us. Basically, guys, if you're in the room, if you're in a room and you're the brightest person, you're in the wrong room. Okay? Now, I feel like I'm in the right room today because there's a lot of smart people here. No, not you, Johnny. I'm not. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> 
Okay, so remember I said that we had hired a guide? Well, as soon as we had him for Everest, he told me about the pitfalls that laid ahead for Everest Base Camp, the lack of oxygen, what it would do to us, the, how cold it would be. He made us aware of what was to come. And sometimes being keen is not enough. You need a good mentor to let you know about the pitfalls that lie ahead. So that's great, you know you need a mentor. Heck, you might already have one, but I wanna walk you through different tips on investing yourself. So number one, learn from only the information you need at this time. Who here is seeing a lot of ads on Facebook targeting you these days? Right? Every time you go on your newsfeed, there's something. Algorithms know you better than your mum knows you. They know what you binge watch, what you like to see, everything. So it's important for you to know what ads you should pay attention to, what Yodas you should be looking at, and you should tune out all the rest of the noise. I'm only on one person's email list at the moment. Everyone else I've unsubscribed. I'm trying to channel what, who I learn from. Watch video success stories. I actually heard this outside earlier. Someone was asking, how do I determine what online course to buy? There's so many people having different dropshipping courses or whatever. This is it, guys. Just watch video success stories. Watch the testimonials. As you can, as Sean's talk, which was amazing this morning, you know, more and more people are doing online courses, and that's only going to continue in the next two to three years. The only way to tell the real difference is to watch video success stories. Number three. I want you to select and utilize mentors that can get you the desired result you are looking to achieve. Once you know about the information you need, you should find a mentor that can help you get that one result. Okay, by this point, you've all met our MC, Luke Walker, right? That guy over there, the bald guy. Yeah, it's my turn now, guys. <laughs> no, um, so basically when I met Luke Walker, it was two years ago, and he was giving a talk in the Nomad Coffee Club about funnels and email marketing. The guy blew me away, it was amazing. I really wanted to learn that inside my business. So I seeked him out as a mentor to get that, that desired result. The thing is though, I wouldn't seek Luke out if I wanted advice on how to grow a good set of hair, for example. Or even how to talk to women. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, <laughs> but I did seek him out to learn funnels and email marketing because the guy's a genius at it and we actually ended up becoming very good friends. So select mentors and utilize them to get certain results. Number four, understand the different levels of mentorship. Okay, what I want you to do is critique right now in your business where you are in the level of mentorship. And what I mean by that is, if you're just getting started, you might be ready to jump on a course and buy someone's program. If you've already got a business running and it's making some revenue, you might be ready to jump in a mastermind for some accountability. If you're already in a mastermind and you want to get past six figures, you might be ready for a one-on-one -on -one coach. Then finally, if you're past that, you're ready to set up your Avengers team. What do I mean by Avengers team? Avengers team is when you have a one-on-one -on -one mentor for each area of your life. This is the top level of mentorship. If you look at all the top guys out there in the online world, they have their, their Avengers team, right? I currently have someone that helps me with my personal fitness. I have someone that is my accountability coach. I have a mastermind to help me scale to a million dollars. And I was even talking to someone yesterday about being nervous about public speaking. <laughs> my point is have a team of Avengers. That's the top level of mentorship. I want you to critique where you are right now. If you're struggling to get to the next level in your business, it might just be because you need to level up your mentorship. All right? So. We did these two things, and that was, the, that was the time the business started to move in the right direction finally. But there was one thing that took us from $6,000 a month profit to $20,000 a month profit and beyond. Now, you remember I mentioned this guy, my Yoda? As soon as we hired him, he said, right, Tom, the goal is Everest Base Camp. You wanna get there. How are we gonna get there? And he reversed every step. He told me where I was gonna go every day, where I was gonna sleep, where we were gonna rest, all of that. I want you guys to think of your customers in the same way. I want you to map out their customer journey. Know your customer journey and implement sales funnels. This was point number three for us. Basically, for those, if you don't know, sales funnel is basically a buy-in process that companies lead customers through when purchasing products, okay? At the time when we were doing $6,000 a month, our blog looked like this. We had a bunch of traffic. It was landing on our blog. 
it was spending a bit of money with us because we were making money for advertising and stuff, but then they were going elsewhere and spending money elsewhere. I see the same thing in dropshipping. They come to your dropship store, they buy a few things, but then they go elsewhere. This was, a, this was what we had with Adventure New. So we started implementing very focused sales funnels. The first thing we did was look at our Thailand traffic. We had a lot of people going to Thailand. So we thought, right, what's the goal? Start with the goal. The goal for us was to get them to buy our Thailand guidebook. Then we, re then we had to think, how are we gonna get them to buy that? Second thing, craft your offer. We were competing with people like Lonely Planet and stuff. So we thought, you know, should we give them a free chapter? Should we give a discount or whatever? We had to decide how to do that. For us, it was a discount, which meant the step before that was we needed to get them as a lead. We needed to get them as an email subscriber. And then a step before that was acquiring them. And obviously that was for our content. So when we applied this sales funnel, it looked a little bit like this. So, you know, we acquire them through SEO for our content. We would grab them as a lead. When you're acquiring a customer uh, as a lead and getting them on your email list for a free lead magnet or whatever it is, you have to identify their pains or their problems or what they would really desire. For us, when people land in our content, and maybe some of you have read our blog, Adventure New, it's, it ranks for a lot of stuff in Southeast Asia. If you land on any of our articles, you will see a pop-up that comes up and says, experience the best of this country, here's a free bucket list. And if you get any of these bucket lists, we'll then show you a one-time offer for our guidebooks, and then I will email you every day until you buy it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, <laughs> but if you do buy my guidebook, we'll then upsell you and offer you all our guides. So we applied this very simple funnel to our Thailand content. And we took our revenue from like 50 bucks on that product a month to $300 a month, just for that one buck. We then applied this to every different country that we had. That drove our uh, um, passive income to like $2,000 a month from these products. And then what we did is we applied these principles with our affiliate partners as well. Anybody that we was doing lead gen for or our hotel affiliates, we applied the same sales funnel process and that's what helped us jump right up to $20,000 a month over that period. It's very important though to start with one funnel. I cannot stress this enough, guys. The, the word funnel has been put out a lot now and there's loads of different things about it, but when you implement it into your business, if it be dropshipping, uh, whatever it is, e-commerce, Blogging, you need to start with one and you need to understand your numbers. Ours were unique page views, lead conversion rate, purchase conversion rate. And again, if you know the ceiling of these things, you'll know how far you want to scale them before you set up a new one. Any dropshippers here today? <laughs> yeah, we know there's a few of you because I made you stand up because I knew you wanna, wouldn't want to put your hands up. But basically, last, this time last year, I was sitting in the crowd at the Nomad Summit. I was watching this guy give a talk, Jay Katsu. He was talking about making $2 million a month in sales with dropshipping. And he applied the same principles I'm teaching you right now. He had a dropshipping store. He had loads of listings. People would come into it. But then what he did is look at 80-20, which is exactly what Lewis said. He looked at what products were doing the best. At the time, I think for him, it was a cream. So he took that cream out, and then he built a focused sales funnel around it. And then he scaled that cream, increased the AOV, and then started making $2 million a month. Another guy that's done it is called Maxwell Finn. He made $3 million a month for, I think, four months in a row, selling a coin with this guy's face on it. <laughs> yes, Mr. Trump. Now, I'm not here to talk about politics, don't worry. I'm here to talk about what the marketing guy did. Now, one of the things Lewis said earlier, and people are doing high-ticket dropshipping, it's awesome, right? And then if you note this, and if you're doing your retargeting, what you could do is take that high value product and focus a sales funnel around it and understand how can I increase my AOV here? With this guy, what he did was he, you could turn the, turn the coin gold after you bought it, that was an upsell. Then it was like you can get someone else's face on this coin. Basically, if you went through the funnel, he had so many upsells and downsells and that was so he could increase his AOV, pump a load of people through it and then increase his LTV on the back. So if you're currently doing retargeting with dropshipping and you're bringing them back to your store, why don't you take that product out, put it into a very focused sales funnel, think of ways you can increase the AOV by adding upsells, order bumps, that type of stuff, and then see if it converts higher. When you start focusing in on the numbers, you should note this, you'll be able to scale it. And then that's, that's when you can really drive up your revenue and profits. 
So if you're ready to put some funnels into your business, I have a few tips for you. Number one, decide on your goal first. This is what we talked about earlier. Number two, map out your customer journey. Do it backwards like I was talking about earlier. Number three, decide what funnel to implement. There are so many funnels that you can do. There's like low ticket, high ticket, product launch, all this stuff. If you're new to this whole funnel world, I highly recommend the book Dot Com Secrets by the owner of ClickFunnels. Uh, write that down if you want to learn more about funnels. It's the book to go for. And then you can use tools like Funnelatics, which is free, to draw these funnels out. And they help you visualize them. If you come into my workshop on Monday, the blogging one, we're going to be doing this together because it's a big thing that we teach our students and it helps you monetize a blog. Number four, focus on your AOV first before your LTV. I see a lot of people worried about their LTV and that's okay, like it's super important. You want to get your profits up. But if you can focus on your AOV and like I said, build those funnels that are highly targeted, this will help you scale your business because when you start putting paid ads into it, Positive cash flow and free cash flow is super important. So when you get that working, you can then increase the LTV on the back. So to recap, guys, by this point, I had known what mountain I wanted to do at Conquer. I had a vision. I'd got a Yoda, actually a few. I'd started to form my Avengers team. And then I'd started implementing sales funnels into my business. What was the only thing that could stop me hitting a million dollars or half a million dollars or a quarter million? The answer was focus, 80-20, and this is a big one. The road to entrepreneurship is super long. It's bumpy, there's roadblocks, you know, you, you're not gonna know what's gonna happen half the time. So you know I told you that story about me going to Everest Base Camp last year. I actually started that journey with Anna. And when me and Anna began on this journey to Everest Base Camp, we had hiked nine days to get to the summit point, and we were 60 minutes away from base camp. We were 60 minutes away from base camp. And by this point, Anna looked like she was gonna die. She looked so white, she kept stopping every five minutes because she couldn't breathe. The guide had been trying to convince her to turn around for the last two hours to go back, but she wouldn't listen because she wanted to make it. We'd been hiking for nine days straight. We'd been training for months. She really wanted to get there, but she looked white. 60 minutes away, I looked at Anna and I remember saying, like, babe, we need to go down. We need to go back down. I said this because at the same time, there was two helicopters lifting off around us, airlifting people back down because they were getting altitude sickness. So in the end, she listened. She turned back around and I walked back down with her. Now the guide had told us if we didn't make it to Everest Base Camp that day, we wouldn't make it there together. I said to him, is there any way we can get there? He said, the only chance you've got is if you wake up six hours earlier tomorrow because we need to walk three hours that way and then you need to walk three hours back and then we've got a 12 hour descent. So I looked at Anna, who looked a bit groggy at the time due to the altitude sickness, I told her, and she said, let's do it. So we didn't sleep that much that night. We got up super early, and we started hiking again to Everest Base Camp. Now this time, we both made it together, and we reached Everest Base Camp. The point of that story is to understand that business is like that. You're gonna have so many roadblocks, so many things that are gonna you know, get in your way. In my first 18 months, I took a bit of investment for my business. This turned out to not go well. Now last year I was able to buy my investor out and give him a return, it was a very proud moment for me. But in the first 18 months, I took on that investment. I didn't do any of these things I'm telling you now. The whole thing was a disaster. I spent tens of thousands of dollars down the drain. I lost tens of thousands of dollars. I spent 18 months of my time, that's more important to me, on this project. I hired the wrong people who were negative. I had the wrong sort of vibe. I ended up building the whole wrong thing. After 18 months, we scrapped the project, but I didn't quit. I then started doing these four things that I'm talking to you about right now. I took a step back, I crafted my vision for my company, and then the rest is history, it started doing well. So here's some focus tips for you guys. And I really want you to listen to these because this has been an amazing day and thank you for listening to me. But the thing is, you're gonna walk away from this wanting to implement like 20 different things, right? <laughs> You probably already know, like, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing this, I should be doing this. The key thing here is to focus. I want you to draw out a yearly company roadmap. And to understand what to put in that company roadmap, I want you to use the rice method to score slash prioritize projects. Don't worry if I've lost you, because at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you the templates for both of them. This is what we use inside of our company to help us focus. We use a company roadmap, which we plan out our projects quarterly, we list the projects and then that keeps us on track of what, we what we're working on in the year. 
And based on what we should work on, what projects, we use the RICE template. This is basically a scoring method. You, you measure projects by reach, impact, confidence, and effort, and it helps you prioritize which order you should put things in. Honestly, I can't stress this enough. If you walk away from this Nomad Summit, you're gonna want to implement so many things to your business, right? So many different projects. Try this out. Put them into the RICE method, and that will tell you actually what you should be focusing on now. And then third, understand where your time goes. Use something like the 80-20 time grid. If you Google 80-20 time grid, you'll see this. Basically, if you wanna build a six-figure business, you need to be doing six-figure activities. You can't be doing $10 activities or, v or you know, just the more sort of manual stuff or replying to emails every day. You need to filter out all the low, all the low activities. I don't get any emails now that's fully automated. I'm focusing on where to allocate the capital of our company. I'm trying to focus on the high value activities. So understand where your time goes. And then finally, this is my final point, focus, plan, execute fast, evaluate, adjust, and repeat. We focus and plan using the yearly roadmap and the rice method that I just walked through. We execute super fast. <laughs> I remember having this idea last November that I should start doing public speaking. <laughs> As you can see, I'm now standing here. So I try to execute things fast and just get on it. Just do it. Evaluate them almost uh, uh, quarterly and we actually have weekly meetings as well. Even if you're a team of one, even if like there's just one person right now, get in the habit of drawing out your roadmap and projects, meet with yourself once a week and reevaluate how things are going. Adjust if necessary and then repeat. So again, to recap the four things that really helped me. And like I said, you might have heard some of these, but I hope there were some nuggets in the tips there. Know your mountain, get a Yoda, know your customer journey and focus. It really was these four things that helped me you know, drive a tuk-tuk across Sri Lanka while making serious money, sail across the Philippines, dive all over Komodo Island, and as you guys know, reach Everest Base Camp with my partner, Anna. Again, all while making serious money, a lot more money than I would have made being back home as an aerospace engineer. Now, you can download the slides and get access to the company roadmap, rice template, and more at tomrogers.com slash nomad. Thank you guys very much for listening to me. I really appreciate it. Any questions? Thank you, Tom. First question. Anybody? Hey, Tom. Thanks very much for that. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd love to hear about how many hours you were putting in, both like in the first 18 months to build up the business, but also nowadays, what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis? That's, an, that's a great question. So, and that, that's actually really interesting. Are we always say